Harry's Wife, part 79.2. I wanna be Michelle. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I've explained to you elsewhere that because narcissists have no sense of self, it's necessary for us to bolt on bits and pieces from other people in order to create the construct. And we do this by way of character trait acquisition. And, keen students of my work that I know that you are, if you'd like to understand more about character trait acquisition, just search for that video, character trait acquisition, and you'll find a video that tells you much more about that. You'll find that very interesting. So do look that up. We take shards, fragments, pieces of the experiences, behaviours of other people and bolt it onto ourselves, creating the construct. The narcissist, of course, also mirrors other people as part of the assertion of control. It enables us to fit in and creates, in effect, a form of rapport between us and the relevant victim by mirroring the behaviours so that person feels comfortable around us, safe, birds of a feather and all that. However, Harry's wife apparently has been engaging in some particular copycat behaviour and character trait acquisition, and social media uses pointed this out, which has been seized upon by the Mail Online, with an article by Stephanie Linning. The headline reads, a royal copycat. Social media users joke Harry's wife is cosplaying Michelle Obama yet again in a $5,840 Loro Piana Berry Cashmere coat, matching $1,685 pants and towering suede pumps for Harlem school visit. Now, in part 79.1, We've talked about the visit in Harlem, and we have touched already upon the somewhat horrendous and rather warm-looking outfit that Harry's wife was wearing. And the Mail Online treats us to a picture of Michelle Obama in her get-up and Harry's wife, and there are stark similarities. Indeed, when I first saw these two pictures, I immediately thought of the Imperial Guard from Star Wars, thinking to myself that this elite unit, whose members served as personal bodyguards to the Galactic Emperor, which was founded by Sheev Palpatine, have somehow find themselves on Earth, appearing as the former First Lady and the Empress of Woke. How astonishing is that? Anywho, the article tells us Harry's wife took a page out of Michelle Obama's style book on Friday when she stepped out in New York in a monochromatic maroon suit, a look strikingly similar to the much louder outfit the former First Lady wore to President Joe Biden's inauguration. The Duchess of Sussex, 40, <coughs> donned a 5,840 Loro Piana cashmere coat, matching $1,685 wide leg pants. Why the wide leg? Is she going to places and engaging in a bit of kleptomania, acquiring things that belong to other people and shoving them down there? Or is it a case that some tree trunk legs have formed? And red Manola Blahnik pointed toe pumps while visited Harlan's PS123 Mahalia Jackson School, despite the temperature. The Duchess rewore some of her favourite accessories, including a 4,500 diamond ring by Burks. Princess Diana, no, Diana, Princess of Wales, $23,000 Cartier tank watch. A $6,900 Cartier love bracelet, a $3,000 Jennifer Mayer tennis bracelet, and her diamond engagement ring, which is estimated to be worth about $350,000, totalling about 387000 worth of jewels. The designer outfit raised eyebrows, given 94% of children at the school they were visiting receive free meals. Imagine if she gave away some of that jewellery, sold it, and it was utilised 
to buy things for those children. Of course, you see, Harry's wife, having no emotional empathy, swans in there, and whilst looking, I have to say, a complete mess in the outfit that she's wearing, and it's expensive, so she ought to seek a refund, but also wearing all of that extravagant jewellery shows a complete absence of emotional empathy. It demonstrates the hypocrisy of her behaviours. Hello, small things. I've come to tell you how I'm going to make the world a better place as I stand here dressed to the nines in lots of expensive stuff that you lot will never, ever own. Now, of course, the children aren't going to sit there and think to themselves, Oh, look, if I'm not mistaken, that's a $3,000 Jennifer Mayer Trenes bracelet. And aren't those Manola Blahniks that she's wearing? Goodness me. But, of course, everybody else sees this. Naturally, she's not going to necessarily forego her diamond engagement ring. It is an engagement ring. People wear that all of the time. But removing some of the other jewellery and perhaps wearing something that is less expensive would be more in keeping with those that she's visiting. Of course, what happens is that her narcissism, operating through a sense of entitlement, which states, I have to be able to wear all this expensive stuff because I am Harry's wife, Duchess of Sussex, then has the collateral consequence that many people talk about the fact that she turns up wearing all of this expensive stuff to a school where 94% of the children receive free meals, that this is a staggering absence of emotional empathy, that it is a failure to read the room, and it just underpins how it's all about her and not really about anybody else. And of course, that actually detracts from what she's trying to achieve, that the talk talking point isn't about what she's apparently doing in terms of the charitable good works, but it's all about, ooh, get her turning up with all this jewellery, thinking she's Lady Muck amongst all of the poor children. The narcissism, in effect, defeats part of what she's trying to achieve. Not that she will be aware of that, of course, because what occurs is that the narcissism blinds her to her behaviours. It blinds her to what's actually occurring. The article explains Harry's wife appeared to be channeling Obama 57 in her berry-coloured ensemble, and Twitter users took notice, with one person joking that the royal was cosplaying Michelle Obama on Inauguration Day. It's undoubtedly the case that there will be some mimicry, for the reasons that I've explained earlier, that because narcissists do engage in that mirroring and character trait acquisition. And of course, Harry's wife's grandiosity is such that not only does she believe that she's bound for political greatness, that she admires the f former First Lady, but only in the sense of what she can do for her, as giving her a leg up, although the Obamas, of course, have distanced themselves, see the Obama birthday bummer in parts passing. But she doesn't think that, oh, I would be First Lady. No, Harry's wife seriously believes that she could be POTUS. And this channeling is part of that mirroring and character trait acquisition. The article explains, Michelle Obama cut a stylish figure in a head-to-toe plum suit by Sergio Hudson when she watched Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris be sworn into office at the Capitol in January. Looking at the two pictures, whilst I wouldn't necessarily encourage my intimate partner primary source to wear such an outfit, what is being worn by Michelle Obama certainly looks a lot smarter than the way that it's worn by Harry's wife. It at least looks stylish and fits her. Whereas, as one looks at the pictures of Harry's wife, the jacket looks far too large for her, and if added with a little bit of white trim, I suppose, she could pop herself into Santa's Grotto later this year and perform a role there. The mother of two wore a floor-length coat over a form-fitting knit turtleneck and wide-legged pants. What's it with all the turtlenecks at the moment? Uh, has it the case that she's been left with a few hickeys by an over-amorous ginger prince? All of these outfits being in the same deep berry shade. She topped off the look with a matching belt featuring a large gold buckle that pulled the outfit together. The choice of colour was significant, as purple is one of the official colours of the suffragist movement, as was her decision to promote Hudson, a young black designer. Harry's wife's version of the monochromatic suit was more relaxed, likely because she was sitting down and reading her new children's book, The Stench Bench, to second graders. Her reversible coat, 
but not an irreversible decision it would appear, is made from double-faced cashmere, features hand-finished invisible seams, and comes complete with a ribbed cashmere knit detachable collar. Who gives a fuck? The designer piece was baggier and far less structured than Obama's coat. They don't say, and Harry's wife wore her sleeves cuffed to show the fabric on the other side. Another unique detail was its pockets, which were framed with a lighter shade of square-shaped lining. Fascinating. A number of people took to Twitter on Friday to point out that the Duchess of Sussex's suit looked a lot like the one worn by Michelle Obama. This giving me Michelle Obama inauguration look, one person wrote, adding, very messy, but the outfit looks similar to Michelle Obama's inauguration 2021 look. Madam Duchess maroon outfit and flowy hair is giving Michelle Obama at the inauguration, someone else agreed, while someone else added, give me Michelle Obama at the inauguration vibes. She's giving Michelle at inauguration and I'm here for it, hashtag flawless, one fan tweeted. Harry's wife may very likely be finding inspiration in Michelle Obama's post-presidency style after she and her husband Prince Harry confirmed earlier this year that they would not be returning as working members of the royal family following their move to the United States. It comes after the Duchess wore two wool coats for her outings in the city on Thursday, prompting jokes from social media users who said she's dressing aggressively for fall. After sporting a strict up-to-do yesterday, Harry's wife wore her brunette locks in a loose waves for today's engagement and complimented her monochrome outfit with a slick of pink eyeshadow. During the visit to the school, Harry's wife wore her buck, the bench, to students. Did she? Well, I suppose she did. She was carrying it around as if it was a part of her. I think the mail means that she read her book. She didn't show the couple of brightly coloured mural in the playground, while Harry's wife put her arms around some of the children and, you, and posed for photos. Of course, the children are being used as props. It's entirely satisfactory for her to leave her own children back in Monte Shitcho, that they don't travel with her, but instead can wander around and use other people's children as a prop. And of course, children are just props to narcissists. They are appliances. I don't care for children. They get in the way. But other narcissists will utilise them as part of the pursuit of the prime aims, albeit again in the case of Harry's wife and any other mid-ranger to do so unconsciously. Her wearing the outfit, ill-fitting as it is, is of course part of the mimicry of Michelle Obama, that she regards herself as on a par with the former First Lady regards herself of comparable status, regards herself of comparable intelligence and charisma. And, of course, whilst there are those that have uh, are detractors of Michelle Obama, I'm sure that they would at least recognise that she has much more going on compared to the vapid and empty Harry's wife. But that's not going to stop Harry's wife from these repeated attempts to channel other people by the mockery of mimicry that she will continue to acquire those character traits from other people, dressing in a similar style to them. We've seen glimpses recently from the Time magazine of channeling the spirit of Steve Jobs or Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes, of course, the fraudster with regard to the um, supposed tech industry that she was involved in that generated huge investor interest and then floundered completely. I may well be looking at Holmes and putting her under the Tudor scope, as it's an interesting case. But, with Harry's wife, this is another example of character trait acquisition, mirroring, the sense that other people are just an extension of her that are to be bolted on and utilised. It also shows, of course, her complete inability, because of the lack of emotional empathy, to recognise that all of the expense that she was wearing does not sit well at all with the people that she was going to see and just underlines the fact that, if, as you know from my work, she simply doesn't care. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.